welcome back students so continuing with our first module so we have seen the introduction to a uh, chemical industry and uh, we also have seen what are the different uh, inorganic and organic based chemical the sulfur compounds the nitrogen compounds the acids so we have discussed at length what are the issues concerning chemical industry and uh, what are the fossil fuels currently being used and what are the way looking forward which one to use what is the carbon to hydrogen percentage how many years it will long so concluding our uh, i mean concluding the most important aspect for all these industries we have not discussed yet that is the process safety because setting up a industry uh, you know it is very uh, we if we have a technology sound technology backed with science so we can set up a industry but in setting up a industry you also need to take care of the safety approach the safety means the safety both in terms of manpower and in terms of the instruments in terms of the overall process so we will uh, start today's lecture where we will discuss the process safety in general and we will take the key examples of the key industrial disasters to have taken place so the third lecture is titled as safety and loss prevention so what we will do we will first discuss what do you mean by process safety especially the loss prevention loss prevention means uh, if i were write down this word loss prevention i will discuss this at length loss prevention means to prevent something going out of control it means that to prevent uh, the operating let's say operating conditions the process or the use of some alternative products reactants any of this if it contributes to the prevention of the loss loss may be in terms of chemicals in terms of materials in terms of equipment okay so this is called as loss prevention then we will discuss the safety issues then the flammability limit the flammability limit is uh, very important in the fact that any material can uh, self ignite or it can auto ignite or it may ignite in the presence of oxygen or it may be just a uh, flash it may conduct uh, when just flash at a certain temperature the flash point temperature so for that the flammability limits needs to be known for any reactants or products which you intend to manufacture the final product or the initial reactant or may not why why the reactants or products you may also have to look into the intermediates which have been formed so that's what uh, we need to know the heat content of the reaction etc for example so as to know the flammable limits then we will see this uh, key industrial disaster uh, primarily what we will discuss is here the bhopal uh, gas disaster so you all know bhopal gas disaster then there is in uh, italy the cerveso uh, cerveso disaster okay so these two were the key industrial disaster obviously none as compared to bhopal gas tragedy which we will discuss so bhopal gas tragedy is a typical example of vapor cloud expansion or vapor cloud instead of expansion i should call it vapor cloud explosion okay so we will see this and way to mitigate the same so the chemical loss prevention let us see what is the loss prevention although i have discussed briefly in the previous slide the chemical process sector has risen fast so resulting in more processed stored and transported hazardous components okay so as you see in the previous two lectures we have seen that there are so many structure of the chemical industry inorganic organic so whatever chemicals you produce it needs to be transported so when it needs to be transported it needs to be stored at some condition so that they do not self ignite or they do not create a flash point so these are very important aspects so that is what we call as loss prevention so larger plants because we know that when we make some large plants they are generally near highly inhabited regions because uh, you have a plant in a remote region then uh, the movement of material plant and uh, man and material will be very difficult so it may add cost so you will need some space maybe not inside the city but just outside the city limits so the it so it is not far off from the actual let's say a metro or a non metro region so large plants are now coming up more so because of the economic activity so obviously if the large plants come up then chemical plant accidents are also natural so chemical plant accidents this may cause personal that is personal means your own uh, safety then economic loss of materials and environmental harm why environmental harm because 
something which is thrown off as a vapor in the atmosphere, it will be vented. So, obviously, it will uh, increase the more than the allowable limit, the permissible limit in the atmosphere and create lot of health issues. So, loss prevention thus if I want to define the loss prevention in a single sentence, it involves identifying the dangers of process facility, the chemical process facility and eliminating them before an accident happens. So, a priori action. So, you should know beforehand what are the different factors which may actually influence your chemical process and then eliminate them before the accident occurs. So, you should have certain uh, uh, leeway, leeway means okay, I, the pressure can increase to a certain extent or the temperature can increase to a certain extent, even if the pressure increases to a larger extent, we should have pressure relief valves, so that it will burst and will stop the reaction or some coolant arrangement, so that it cools down the temperature if it goes or away or if it actually leads to a runaway reaction. Runaway reaction means what? Runaway reaction means the reaction which you cannot control. So that is why this loss prevention techniques needs to be identified. So, explosions, fires or the discharge and dispersion of poisonous chemicals, they are the major dangers in the chemical plants. So, what is the difference between uh, explosion and fire? So, explosion means the propagation of the hazardous or the propagation of the heat waves, the rate of propagation is much, much higher as compared to fire that is how we differentiate explosion and fires. So, with that there is a discharge and dispersion of poisonous chemicals. Now, explosions if I talk about what do you mean by explosion? Explosion is usually the unconfined vapor cloud expansion. I have written the greatest economic damage, but instead of economic I should also add the human damage, human health damage that is also important because some of the gases when they go into the atmosphere the probability of these gases discharging to remain in the atmosphere depends on lot of factors at that time. So, it will depend upon the temperature of the air just above the ground, the wind velocity, the humidity. So, all these factors whether it was whether it happened during winter or in summer months. So, all this happens these factors needs to be taken care of to find out what is the how these pollutants are dispersing in the atmosphere. But unfortunately, the propal gas tragedy uh, which happened in 1984 and killed around 2500. So, uh, this is taken from the book, I, I, I suppose this should be a much higher number than 8000, uh, I mean it is what is unconfirmed, I am confirmed unconfirmed reports as per media reports, it says more than uh, 50,000. So, it wounded more than 2 lakh more, but the important is they have made a permanent scar on the society. What is the permanent scar? So, the birth deformity, so like cancers, heredity, uh, some genetic disorders, blindness, this has been there in the all the victims of Bhopal gas strategy till date. So, you see this gap, so you must be aware this Bhopal gas strategy for when it take, took place that time I think um, if I am correct it was happening during winter. So, at that time the temperature of the air was not that high. So, the, all the uh, dispersion of these gases stayed close to the ground level. So, it could not escape towards the atmosphere. Because of this, the damage was acute. So, let us then uh, quantify these accidents. So, if I want to quantify these accidents, so type of accidents and probability of occurrence, what is the potential for fatalities and the economic class. So, fatalities means human life, economic loss means your in terms of monetary loss. Probability means how probable this can happen, how frequently this can happen. So, let us see what are the type of fire. Fire can happen uh, very often because it may catch fire, let us say you have some uh, catalyst in its reduced state kept somewhere and it catches a fire, it can happen or some material it auto ignites it will catch a fire, this can happen. So, in that case what will you do? You will just cut the source of oxygen that is the first task. So, see if you have something and with oxygen it will easily burn. So, you cut off the source of oxygen or cut off the fuel, you cannot cut off the fuel, you can cut off the source of oxygen. So, then you can prevent. So, the potential of fertilities in the case of fire is low 
and economic loss is intermediate fire may gut up certain area but it may not gut it may be localized because if you spray something which actually cuts the source of oxygen uh, it is not a reaction so you can easily cut the fire uh, the pad the territory for the fire spread you can easily cut off explosion now this is very intermediate it cannot happen uh, too often this explosion is usually uh, occurred due to a malfunction in the industrial equipment or due to human error or due to some technical error. When I say technical error, it means I refer to the improper design of the plant. So, it is intermediate, potential fatality is also intermediate, but if it is explosion, because explosion uh, you can contain because if you have the safety valve or you have automatic coolant so that it directly you have connected to automatic control system. So, it will immediately put on the cooler, it can cool down the, uh, the, the high temperature explosion. Potential of economic loss is high because you know if you have a boiler let us say it explodes. So, the along with the boiler the auxiliary equipments will also get destroyed. So, amount of potential equipment in economic terms is very high. Now, the third part is toxic release both fire and explosion can be linked to toxic release. If it is fire or if it is explosion finally the end product or end result may be a toxic release of gaseous contaminant. The probability is low because it will only happen when some runaway reactions takes place and a vapor cloud is there it just escapes from the reactor or some pressure vessel. But the potential of facility is very high because most of the gases if they are dangerous that is if they are quantified using let us say how it affects the health of a human, if it can penetrate the skin, all this actually makes this particular toxic release to be very potential. And economic loss, well you do not have any economic loss, it just escapes from the equipment. So, the equipment stays that is, so whatever this economic loss is very less. Now, if you see in the types of chemical plants, what causes the chemical accident? So, this totals up, so in the y axis percentage incidence or percentage the cause, so this is the causes basically, what causes the these different acts. So, let us say somebody want uh, some disgruntled employee wants to do something, so it may cause arson, sabotage, then maybe some design error 4 percent of those incidents are uh, you know these are taken care to design an error. Then natural hazard let us say uh, in case of uh, something like happens as the earthquake, so you must be aware of the Fukushima. A nuclear accident. Huh? So, because of the earthquake there was some nuclear discharge so that is called natural hazard. Then process upset. So, you suppose uh, you did not study the reactions properly. So, there may be some intermediate reaction which can create a lot of heat of enthalpy. So, that may also cause accident. Huh? So, then you have unknown miscellaneous Unknown miscellaneous means you cannot put a blame on a single factor. It may happen uh, some it is the design of the maybe the instrument or maybe the reactor or the boiler the material of construction that may be faulty. So, that is unknown or miscellaneous and then mechanical failure also similar. So, the mechanical and miscellaneous failure these are let us say due to uh, like the joints are not proper, welding is not proper, the temperature there is some instrumentation error all this actually contributes to the uh, mechanical failure and unknown miscellaneous failure. So, let us go ahead. So, now before that we need to know what is the flammability fact, what do you mean by flammability? Flammability means it is something a danger posed by a flammable substance and relies on either the flash point, the auto ignition temperature, the flammability limitation and the energy generated burning. So, flash point means the temperature at which the particular material causes a flash to happen. So, that flash may actually ignite some other reaction. So, you should not do I mean it should you should know the flash point of that reactant or product. Auto ignition it may something like that it may happen that it does not require any ignition source. So, you have it may ignite on its own so that is called auto ignition. So, that also you should know if it is auto ignition temperature should be known. Then flammability limitation, flammability limitation means uh, how flammable it is. So, you should, it is usually defined by the two things the lower flammability and the upper UFL, lower flammability limit and upper flammability limit LFL and UFL. 
these two are the values which actually define the flammability limit. So it means the not enough fuel, low flammability limit, not enough fuel is there to burn or upper flame is too much of oxygen is there, okay, either there is not much fuel or there is too much of oxygen, so it means the upper flammability limit. So because of this there is energy generated for the burning that is the heat of combustion so that is also causes the, uh, the danger caused by a flammable substance. So distinction between the flames and explosion is usually given by the pace of energy release. So fires emit energy slowly but explosion release energy extremely fast in microseconds. So this is the difference, important difference between fires and explosion. So now as I told you for combustion these three are very important for anything to burn whether it is explode or burn you need a fuel, you need an oxidizer or you need an ignition source. So if you can cut any of this, you cut any of this you are safe or you are able to cut any of this, you are potentially safe. So fuel means you should have some, some, something to burn with which you can burn in the presence of oxidizer, let us say gasoline, wood, propane. Oxidizer means obviously the fuel has to react with something. So what are the oxidizer which produce oxygen such as oxygen, chlorine, the chlorine itself is oxidizer or hydrogen peroxide. Okay. Oxidizer means you increase the oxidation state, so it can be either due to oxygen, chlorine, hydrogen. So these are all oxidizers. So if you cut any of this, this fuel will not burn. If you let us say if you cover the entire fuel in the say uh, inert gas, this will not burn, you are safe. Or ignition source, so let us say you have an ignition source, let us say auto ignition something happens, then and you have already fuel and oxidizer present, then also you read an ignition source. So maybe it may be a form of spark, flame, static electricity or heat. So either or presence of either of these can cause the ignition. So when one of them is absent, when one of them is either fuel, oxidizer, ignition source absent or is present in too low an amount the fire will not develop. So I hope you understand, so our aim is to cut any of these three, fuel you cannot cut because fuel is what we are producing. Oxidizer and ignition source you can easily cut, so let us say if you cannot cut oxidizer, it has to be stored in air, then what you do, you can just blanket this particular material in the presence of inert gas. So if it is an inert gas, then uh, air will not be in coming in contact with the fuel, so it will not combust. Okay. So moving ahead, so flammability limit as I told you, flash point, the lowest temperature at which a liquid will ignite from an open flame. Auto ignition temperature, temperature at which a material will ignite spontaneously in air without any external source of ignition. So flash point and it auto ignition temperature, although they looks to be similar the de by definition it is bit different. Auto ignition means it will ignite spontaneously in air without any source of ignition. Okay. Then I told you the lower flammability limit and the upper flammability limit. So if I first let us discuss the flammability limit, flammability limits lowest and highest concentration of a substance in air at normal pressure and temperature at which a flame will propagate through the mixture. This is the actual definition. So the concentration, whenever you are talking about LFL, UFL, we are talking about the concentration of that particular material. If the LFL mixture is too lean to burn, so it means below this limit it is too lean. So you do not have much fuel, upper means if it is upper this particular limit it is too rich to burn, not enough oxygen, so you have more amount of you know fuel but very less oxygen, it cannot burn. So in between these two your materials would actually, uh, so these are the two limits actually they set up, so as to you know if you want your process to develop, you should note these two limits. In between these two limits, mostly the materials lie. So you have to classify them based on these two limits and then use it in your own process system. So let us see what are the toxicity and the flammability characteristics of selected liquids and gases. So uh, let us see this particular, uh, the uh, heat of, uh, so these are the different colors. Okay. So the colors means uh, what do they say is the uh, these are the different colors means it shows the heat of combustion, the auto ignition, 
then upper flammability limits, lower flammability limits, the flash point and the TLV. So, uh, these two are almost the uh, same. So, if I want to explain this, I should better explain this particular uh, tabular form. So, these are the different gases. We have gases like ethyne and uh, we have hydrogen. Okay. So, and then we have ethene, then we have liquids like acetone, benzene, butane, cyclohex and ethanol. Then, uh, so gases also you have methane also and toluene. So, see first given is TLV, the threshold limit value. So, this is the ppm. TLV means this particular, uh, uh, you know, this particular column refers to the concentration, means they will emit at a standard temperature and pressure. So, if you see uh, this, uh, because we and uh, this 800 ppm, 300 ppm, 1000 ppm, 270. So, most of them, you know, methane has that highest threshold limit value. Okay. Then the flash point, if you see since it is a gas, you do not have any value flash point. So, it is if it has 253 Kelvin, it will catch a flash, then benzene, then all these uh, flash points. So, this flash point of methane is very low 85. Then lower flammability limits and upper flammability limits are given. So, the concentration at these 1.3, 7.9, these are the all the lower and upper flammability limits. Then auto ignition temperature, this is very important because this will tell the temperature where it will self if ignite. So, auto ignition temperature, see all the values are very, very high. So, let us say for cyclohexane, it is around 518 Kelvin, not that high. It is close to around uh, 230 degrees Celsius, but the remaining all the gases, hydrogen, everything is very high. Now, if you see the heat of combustion, the hydrogen obviously is the highest, highest heat of combustion. Okay. So, it means it is used as a fuel hydrogen, methane is also I think, yeah, I think it is the second best. So, these two as you know, these are the sources of fuel, natural gas, hydrogen. So, that is why they have a high heat of combustion. The remaining are very close, like butane is almost close to uh, methane, but in terms of megajoules per kg is little different. So, these are uh, the very important in, in a way that uh, this actually gives us a value or an idea what are the threshold limit value, flash point, lower flammability limit, upper flammability limit and the different temperatures. So, that when you work with these chemicals, you should be well aware of the danger it possesses. So, now let us come to the industrial disasters. So, the first disaster which we will take up is the Flixboro disaster. Okay. The Flixboro is a place in United Kingdom and this incident occurred in June 1974. What is this industrial disaster? here a vapor cloud explosion took place. So, what it is? So, they actually manufactured a uh, uh, pesticide. So, an intermediate uh, in the manufacture of caprolactam, I am sorry, they manufactured the not pesticide, it is caprolactam, they manufacture caprolactam and intermediate, uh, intermediate compound in the manufacture is cyclohexanol. So, it is formed by the partial oxidation of cyclohexane. So, the conversion must be maintained low, typically around 10 percent to prevent the total oxidation of the feed end product. So, this is the reaction which occurs. So, this is your cyclohexane. In the presence of oxygen, this is some, uh, uh, you know, the, in the presence of catalyst which occurs, triborate, it forms cyclohexanol. So, the delta H is my negative minus 172 kilojoule. So, it is exothermic reaction. So, this reaction occurs only issue is the conversion must be maintained low to about 10 percent to prevent total oxidation of the fuel and product. So, what happened? So, this is actually plant of that uh, Flix borrow disaster. What happened is you have air supplied to a series of reactors. So, I have not made a reactor 5 here intentionally I have kept it blank. So, cyclohexane is sent here, these are different reactors at a temperature and pressure. So, what happens? Conversion occurs and you get cyclohexanol at the intermediate product. Now, it is as I told you the conversion should be kept to around 10 percent. Now, what happens? Cyclohexane was lost when a temporary conduit bypassing an out of service reactor burst into flames 
leading to the loss of an estimated 30 metric tons. Now on that day what happened this reactor had some problem. So what they did they took out this reactor for maintenance. So once they took out the reactor obviously you cannot stop the entire plant together. So they said that okay fine we will just uh, repair that reactor and again put it back. So what they did instead of fixing it properly they bypassed the entire product through a some pipe a bypass pipe. Through a bypass pipe the products were sent into the final reactor. And now the issue is this reactor this reaction took place to a more than 10 percent. This reactor proceeded and it was above 10 percent. What happened? The vapor phase you know the vapor phase created a pressure increase and when it created a pressure increase because see these if you see there are jackets present here the temperature and pressure can be controlled in all the reactors 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But here there was nothing so the pipe just burst open and when it burst open the vapor cloud explosion took place in this way okay. So this actually ruptured this entire pipe connecting reactor 4 to reactor 6 and it sent close to 30 metric tons into the atmosphere. So now the issue is okay fine and the cyclohexane was vented into the atmosphere. So what is the big deal cyclohexane if we see in the previous case it is not that auto ignition is 220. Now as I told you you need 3 sources you have fuel, you have oxygen, fuel and oxygen you already have fuel is cyclohexane oxygen is in the air. Now what do you need? The third, the third is your ignition source. So it says that they have not reported what is the ignition source, they only referred to it. an unknown ignition source ignited the vapor cloud. So when it ignited the vapor cloud, it slowly spread throughout the factory and there was a huge explosion. So 28 individuals were killed in the attack which devastated the whole factory. What is the cause now? What is the cause? You must be knowing now, now it is insufficient support of the bypass pipe. So when you prepare such a pipe, you should be very aware that you cannot just put some pipe and let us see, array, it is fine, it will go on for the next day. Anyway, next day the actor is coming. So there was a faulty design in the pipe that failed to account for the movement of the pipe owing to the pressure. So above the normal pressure, the bellows at either end of the pipe, so you know this bellows the bellows at either end of the pipe started to collapse and fail. When it failed, it exploded. So that is why we come, if it is exploded, it means there is a toxic emission. So we should also understand what is the toxicity. Now the toxicity can be defined as in terms of acute or short term or long term toxic effects on human tests. Usually the toxicity they test on animals to determine substance intrinsic toxicity. To measure a substance acute effect, scientists use a figure known as the LD50. Now this is very important for chemical engineers who are practicing. So LD50 values you should be knowing. So it is a lethal dosage at which 50 percent of the test animals die. Okay. So what is the dose in milligram per kg of the animal? That is the way it is defined. LD50 figure only provides a rough idea of the potential long term effects of a substance. Threshold limit value which just now I discussed two slides back in the form of tablet form is the most often used reference for limiting the long term exposure to polluted air. So the TLV value in that if you recollect we defined some ppm values. So TLV here the threshold limit value is defined as the concentration to which it is estimated that the typical worker may be exposed for 8 hours a day every day for 5 days a week. So whatever ppm I have written in the table, the second column, it is that value which may be exposed to a worker 8 hours a day every day for 5 days a week without causing any damage. That is what the scientists say. So the, but the, this is all fine, this is all short term, but this is short term, acute toxicity. But what about chronic? Chronic on the hand are very difficult to quantify because they may take months or even years to manifest. As a result, the cause may be difficult to pinpoint. 
such as let us say somebody some workers are working in asbestos factory or the cement factory or solvent factory. So, you are inhaling you, uh, it will not cause immediately it will take years to find because uh, there are many such even if I want to say one example recently if you see uh, you are frequently seen that is municipal waste catch fires because it is exposed to sunlight and nowadays in the summer season temperatures rise to 45, 46. The, then may be so you have fuel here, you have oxygen here, then maybe heat may be the ignition source, all three of these it catch fire. If it catch fires there is incomplete combustion. When this incomplete combustion occurs, you know these compounds which is called dioxins, they are very potent, the most dangerous uh, carcinogenic nature known to humans or humans have synthesized. This gets liberated. Even it is in parts per billion, it will inhale, it will stay in your body for at least a half time of almost 9 years. So, that is why we should be very concerned, you should not burn the municipal waste just like that. The solution for any, or any municipal waste is to incinerate it, not burn, because if you incinerate it, it would not allow it to form a polycyclic type of compounds because poly these dioxins are all polycyclic compounds. So, we will discuss this uh, dioxins, we have an another example for that. So, these are LD50 values of some substances. So, these animal I am referring is rat. So, what are the different substances? Dioxin, potassium cyanide, so dioxin actually sorry this is it should be not be E potassium cyanide, tetraethyl lead, lead, DDT, aspirin, hosium chloride. So, if you see uh, what are the ones which is much more 75.54 percent if I want to say the LD50 values, I mean I just plotted this particular second uh, column in terms of percentage pie chart here. So, all these are clubbed here, it may not be visible to you, but it will be visible in the LD50 values. So, this is dioxin uh, LD50 value is very high this amount even is this amount it is very toxic ok. So, it is milligrams per kg, milligrams per kg. This is 10 mg potassium cyanide, tetraethyl lead, lead. So, as you go and up so it is 4000 milligrams per kg sodium chloride. So, if you see this is the category, the if category these three two are very toxic potassium cyanide dioxin, dioxin is very toxic then potassium cyanide, then lead, then DDT, aspirin, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride as you know we have common salt. So, it means see that even if you digest such a huge amount of LD50 value is so huge that it would not happen anything to you. But if you take this even in terms of PPM or PPB also it is very toxic. So, now next example it is the Bhopal gas strategy you are well aware. Bhopal gas plant actually manufactures pesticides among them Carbaryl is one of the pesticide. The procedure involves the use of a methyl isocyanide gas. This is an intermediate gas formed during the production of carbaryl. This is very flammable, corrosive and poisonous and has a TLV of 0 0.02 parts per billion. So, 0 0.02 if it is above this value parts per million it will be damaging to the human body. Catastrophe began when a huge MIC storage tank was contaminated with a considerable volume of water resulting in an exothermic runaway reaction. This runaway reaction actually occurred at the temperature in the storage tank rose over its boiling point because 312 Kelvin is the boiling point of MIC. So, if it is going above that runaway reaction it will explode, again you have a vapor cloud expansion. So, the issue is it could have been solved, it could have been prevented had the pressure relief system as well as the scrubber and flare were working. But unfortunately, these two were not working. It actually led leading to an accidental discharge of this MIC vapors. It is a, so, around 40 metric tons of MIC were leaked, the hazardous fog extended to the next town. Because I told you this happened in winter, fog was there, so the atmospheric dispersion was not that good. So, the air stayed very close to the ground, so it caused extensive damage. In addition to the estimated 2500 civilian deaths and estimated 2 lakh people were injured as a result of the fumes density which was almost double to that of the air. So, it will stay just close to air, it will never go up. So, the damage was permanent and it stayed for a long amount of time. So, how could we have prevented such an accident? First is we should have a, some design measures, we should have a well executed review or the HAZOP study 
hazardous potential study should have identified the problem adequate refrigeration so if you had a refrigeration means if you want to if we had a some coolant so as to cool that storage so let's say something is getting leaked then it should automatically put on the cooler that could prevent the runaway reaction neither that was present on that fateful day the scrubber and flare system again it went for the operation it was went for a maintenance it was not there they should have been fully operational if you have been sending this to repair there should be another one which should be managed that so neither was present so the inventory of this one way another one way one is the design measures which was obviously not there the inventory can be minimized that is if you produce mic uh, suppose you produce mic and consume it locally so you require less amount or the low amount of the boiler reactor all those things but uh, since it is not possible because pesticides you know these are very much useful in farming agricultural so it has to be transported all over india so at that time they are has to be manufactured in a large scale so what that for this is a conventional loop you have this methyl amine reacting with this is what you call is a phosgene gas okay phosgene f o s g e n e so this is the mic okay so this is your methyl isocyanate mic gas and hydrochloride gas this is methyl amine this mic then actually reacts with one naphthol this is one naphthol and it forms a pesticide this is the pesticide which actually is the main product carbaryl now what could have been done this is the conventional route could we actually propose another alternative route so that it does not involve mic yes now it looks like it was possible this is proposal in this manner so you have one naphthol here instead of methyl amine you use carbonyl chloride cocl2 and you form this compound which is called as one naphthol chloroformate this is called one naphthol chloroformate this one naphthol chloroformate then reacts with methyl amine instead of using it in the first step use in the second step the methyl amine and you form this same thing that is the carbaryl okay so this was another method you could have used so in this there was no gases so you could easily control there was nothing to escape so except because this phosgene gas is been consumed so this was an alternative route but now i mean this type of you should see that's why the basic science the basic reaction should be know beforehand you should know also whether the ex, ex, the particular reaction is exothermic or not all these things so that is another way so first is design strategy then is your uh, safety study the hazop study then uh, is your alternative route or alternative reaction so if you see most of the toxicity the toxic gases the reactions which are taking place in chemical industry are due to these uh, these part that is due to sulfonation is one of the reaction which is sulfonation then nitration polymerization hydrolysis halogenation salt formation so what are the percentage contributing to these reactions to this exhaust these gases polymerization is the largest is around close to how much it is it is close to 50% the remaining sulfonation nitration hydrolysis halogenation salt formation is around let's say 40% and the remaining 10% 20% is others and in these others what are the different reactions where there may be some gases evolved esterification amination friedel friedel crafts reaction oxidation diazonation okay so these are the different percentage uh, what it is out of this so others means combination of all these reactions so the reactivity hazards okay the reactivity hazards the exothermic runaway reaction just for you have seen that is the reaction of the methyl amine and production of mic so uh, hazards how they are classified the exothermic runaway reactions we have to check whether they are occurring in a batch or semi batch processes if they are occurring in a batch of semi batch processes what are the different outcomes or decisions we have to take we halt the production so that it should not result in serious injuries or even death so the exothermic reactions particularly related to polymerization nitration sulfonation hydrolysis should be 
uh, tracked very carefully. Then there are the chemical hazards among the in with this runway reaction there are chemical hazards. Then we have to study what are the thermal instability of the reactants, intermediates or products because the propyl gas strategy taught are these things. Then we have to also identify what are the exothermic reactions. If it is exothermic reactions, it should not raise the temperature of the reactants or product to the decomposition temperature of the substances. So that if it goes to the decomposition temperature of the substances, this will boil. So if it boils, then a, a cloud expansion can take place. Then rapid gas evolution which can pressurize and possibly rupture the plant. So these things you should keep in mind, the Bhopal gas strategy what they have said is you should always identify the hazards. So hazards means in two forms whether the type of reactors, type of reaction and then what are the nature of the reactants and products and whether the exothermicity actually relates it to the decomposition temperature. All these things, things if had it been studied then such a tragedy such as Bhopal gas tragedy would have averted. Now another example which you can see is Sevoso accident in Italy 1976. So this again was making some uh, pesticides. So what happened is in the Sevoso ex experiment, the plant was being shut down for the weekend. The reactor was half filled with unreacted material at increased temperature. So the runaway reaction occurred in the unstirred mixture was sparked by heat input from the hot dry wall of the reactor to the top layer of the reaction mixture. Temperature of this higher, so this is tri, uh, tetrachlorophenol, so this is, this is 245 trichlorophenol, so this is 245, I write here TCP indicates trichlorophenol and the reactant is your 1245 tetrachlorobenzene, 1245 tetra tetra chlorobenzene. When it reacts with sodium hydroxide, it forms 245 trichlorophenol and sodium chloride. So this reaction what happened plant was being shut down as I told you the reactor was half filled with the unreacted material. So unreacted material means this particular reactant. So the temperature was higher at that time. So the runaway reaction occurred due to the unstirred reactor was sparked by a heat input from the hot dry wall of the reactor to the top layer of the reaction mixture. So it means some reactor was like this you have the unreacted product here. So this this it is a top layer of the reaction mixture, the dry wall. This dry wall had a higher temperature. So this got, I mean, you know, it get contact with the uppermost layer. Because of this uppermost layer, the temperature of this higher layer reached the level at which the exothermic process commenced. After 7 hours, these events resulted in the onset of further more rapid exothermic reaction processes as below. So this is that particular reaction which occurred. So here if you see, this is 245 TCP actually two molecules of this actually produce this is what we is called as the most con this is the congener of dioxin overall this is called dioxin why dioxin because in this compound you have two oxygen atom if it is a single oxygen atom it will be furan so this particular dioxin is named in this manner it is 2378 2378 tetrachlorodibenzo tetrachlorodibenzo then dibenzo para dioxin para dioxin so this is short form they also called is that tcdd so you can uh, find out this is the most um, carcinogenic compound ever synthesized by a human being okay so this is very dangerous for our human health. As I told you, these are from, from municipal waste also if you do an incomplete combustion. So this is called dioxin and this reaction, instead of this reaction, so this particular reaction, there was some unreacted product. So that this was a runaway reaction it formed. So this is the exact reaction which is occurring. Just now I wrote the 2,4 trichlorophenol getting converted to 3,7,8 dibenzo perachlorine 2378 implies the position of the chlorine atom 2378 2378 and dioxin means you have two oxygen atoms here
So, the ruptured disc in the safety wall burst as a result of excessive pressure. Aerosol cloud containing this dioxin was released to the air. So, TCDD here is a byproduct of the uncontrolled exothermic reaction. The reactor was not equipped with the automatic cooling system. So, no operator was there to manually initiate the cooling and stop the reaction. So, after around 20 minutes, the worker saw the cloud and halted the discharge. The dioxin or TCDD which is usually referred to as dioxin is carcinogenic even in parts per billion level. So, 30 square kilometers of land and flora were immediately contaminated by a dioxin which is toxic to humans in microgram levels. So, unfortunately, nobody was dead. There was treatment, many were injured, so they were treated for dioxin poisoning. So, what are the perspectives? If I conclude, that is, in addition to chemical reactors, runaway reactions may take place in storage tanks as well. You should not keep the storage tank as it is. You should check for its temperature periodically. Dangers of using catalyst must be taken into consideration. In their reduced form, many metal based catalysts are pyrophoric, means they will catch fire on its own and it should be kept away from flammable materials. One way is to cover with them with an inert gas such as nitrogen while not in use. Let us say you are unloading a coke catalyst in an FCC on hydrocracking process, there is a risk of iron sulphide fire. These are key examples taken from the book of Moline. It is essential that the iron sulphide be soaked in water so as to prevent it from spontaneously igniting and releasing fumes. After the cooled catalyst is removed from the reactor, it may either be chilled to below 320 Kelvin or put into containers that have been purged and rendered inert with nitrogen and then cooled. So, this is one way of you how you can take care of the catalyst. Either you make it wrap with an inert gas or you soak in water to prevent it from self igniting. Another example, when carbon monoxide containing gases comes in contact with catalyst, hazardous compounds may form. At high temperatures below 430, this metallic nickel may generate nickel carbonate, carbonyl. Okay. This is very important. At low temperature, this nickel NiCO4 is very poisonous practically, but it and it is a practically odorless gas. So, it should be purged with nitrogen gas. So, this carbon monoxide containing gases should not come in contact with the this catalyst containing nickel catalyst. So, it should always be purged, the nickel should always be purged with nitrogen gas. So, what are the design approaches to safety till now? What have we learned? First is the identification assessment of hazards. So, we should identify what are the hazardous chemical and physical properties of all reactants and products. The reactions enthalpy should be monitored or assessed. So, how whether it is exothermic and endothermic, what is the amount of heat is released. Then the corrosion rates, whether do they corrode the reactors or the boilers, hazard study and the fall tree analysis, hazard means hazardous potential study we should do. What are the hazardous, yeah, actually it is a quantifiable term. So, you give some rating or number to any process unit. So, that you should do beforehand you set up a plan, it is called the HAZOP study. Then you should, you should have a control of the process, you should have automatic control systems such as alarm, interlock, strips. Then if it is hazard is possible to control, you can replace the hazardous chemical by less dangerous chemicals or you can minimize the inventory of hazardous substance which are already present or you can add the inert gas to reduce oxygen supply such as the example we will take up in the later module production of ethene oxide so as to lower their lower flammability limit. So, these are the three different aspects and the final aspect if some happens then you should have something to reduce the loss. You should either you can install a sprinkler system, there should be a provision of firefighting equipment and safe plant layout. There should be a pressure relief device such as for example, in the case of manufacture of ethene, they should be installed for venting it to the atmosphere or to the scrubbers, flares, condenser. So, all these instruments should be present in the chemical plant so that if something happens untoward, so they should be able to absorb that some conditions which is a bit away or deviates from their operating temperature and pressure. So, devices such as pressure relief devices. For example, scrubbers, flares, condensers, they all should be there so as to control the temperature or pressure. So, I will conclude my lecture here. So, you should go through this Jacob Molling book and uh, for the details of whatever we have discussed, I have only taken it from this textbook. And this Daniel Kroll you should have to learn more about the HAZOP study and the 
fall tree analysis this is the basic book for chemical process safety and the remaining the product design development you can see so this also talks about little bit of the process safety parameters thank you mm -hmm.